This is the boat that we're gonna be installing these nav lights on. We're gonna mount this nav light right here, right about there. Straightforward install, so let's get to it. What's up cousins? Anthony Jones here with Brigade Boats and in this video I'm going to do a step-by-step -step installation of these super tiny LED navigation lights. They have a two mile visibility. They are U.S. Coast Guard approved and I'm going to show you how I put them in and also how they turned out so stick around. Take a look at Six Sense Fishing's newest hard bait that they've added to their lineup, the Flat Finesse F4. Featuring a rock solid circuit board lip, internal weight transfer system to bomb cast this bad boy and phenomenally detailed paint schemes that Six Sense Fishing is known for. Definitely check them out at SixCentsFishing.com and show your support for our channel by using the code BRIGADE at checkout to get 10% off your entire order. Guys, we are on the road to 50K, so if you want to help us out, join the channel. If you enjoy the content, hit that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. All right, guys, before we get started, let's take a look at these lights really quickly. These are made by a company called Osnium. Osnium is known for their LED light technology. They have their own website, although I purchased these on Amazon. And I will tell you, these are not cheap. I'm using these on my personal John Boat build, and I showed them to my customer, and he was like, man, I want to use the same ones on my build. These are the ones we're going to install today on my customer's uh, boat build. It says here, U.S. Coast Guard approved 33CF 83.810 meets ABCA-16. I don't know what that means, but they're Coast Guard approved. Two nautical mile visibility. And they're super, super tiny and just really really cool looking these are them guys and if you can just see how how small they are and you heard that these are actually aluminum these are not plastic these are powder coated black and you can see the led light inside and it says uh on the led inside u.s coast guard approved 2 nm which is nautical mile and uh that's really all there is to it uh straightforward install so let's get to it all right, guys, so this is the boat that we're going to be installing these nav lights on. This is a low 170. It's a 17-foot aluminum bass boat. I'm doing a full build on it, and I'm getting to the tail end of things, just uh, doing my final wiring, which is why we need to get these nav lights in place. As you can see it's got a very aggressive hole to it, and this side flares out. We're going to mount this nav light right here. Again, it's a side mount, and the same thing on this side right about there and uh, we're going to measure everything out drill some holes get these things mounted up now installing these is going to be different depending on the boat and the hole design and all that jazz this one has kind of this bow that does this and there is just no way to get back in there this side's got poor foam it just really the only open area was here there was a small he a hole here for some stock electrical panel that was up here and all i did was simply extend it and make it bigger and then I cut one identical to it on this side. That way I could get back in there. And as you can see, the nav light's gonna go right under here and I could reach that hole through there. Same deal through here. So the owner will have access if he ever needs to replace these or get to the wiring. Long-term, both of these holes are gonna get covered up with some panels. They're gonna look really nice, but that's gonna be at the end as a finished product. All I'm doing here is just visually seeing kind of where I want these to go. Right about in there looks good to me up towards the front to kind of get that light to illuminate out front as best as possible. We'll just trace this out. Kind of looks good to me. This boat's going to get painted a contrasting color to offset the bottom coat. So this will kind of match that bottom coat. I know you guys probably don't care about that, but from a design standpoint, I think that'll look good with that nice little bit of color around that light. FYI, I took a step back and looked at it and realized that was just a little too close to the front. So I shifted it over, liked that a lot better, going to move forward. So we got to drill a hole to fit these bad boys on the side of the boat. And let me show you kind of how this works. It's got these two on the back that screw in. As you can see, we're going to remove them. And remove them completely. All right, I need to drill a hole to the closest diameter I can get it of this size. 
So I'm gonna look at my hole saw bits. Got some different ones here. I've got a whole set. An inch is gonna get me. So we're gonna run with the one inch, which I use a lot. Before I drill any holes, I wanna show you I marked the center. I measured over, ended up being five and a half inches and then one inch down to the center of that. So all I did was take my tape measure, transfer that five and a half in inches over, made a little dot, measured one inch down, I'm gonna use a Ryobi impact to drill the pilot hole. I'm gonna come back with my Ryobi with a one inch hole saw. There we go. Before I install them, I wanted to go ahead and test them and make sure they operate properly. And just to note, they mark these with green tape for the green and red tape for the red. I've taken the littlest bit of clear silicone and put it around the edging just to make sure when this thing goes in and locks in that no water can get in through this hole. Now it's well above the water line, but better be safe than sorry while we're doing it. Just a little mental note, there's lettering in there and obviously I don't want it upside down just because I'm OCD. I'm gonna put it in and then I'm gonna hop in the boat and then screw these on. This is the clear silicone that I use. This is GT2100 and I love this stuff. It's nearly bulletproof. It grips really well and it cures super fast. So perfect for a project like this to hold those nav lights in place and create a nice permanent seal. Of course, another option is 3M5200. I've used that before. It works great. It doesn't cure as fast and it's white, which I don't necessarily like because it could get all over those nice nav lights and just one more thing to clean up. And I've actually installed these same nav lights on a boat build that you will see in the future on the channel. And I used a step bit on that deal. Uh, just another option for drilling the hole. Step bits seem to work a little bit better, but honestly, one inch is about where you're gonna be. Seven eighths is definitely too small. Really 15 sixteenths would be ideal for the whole diameter. Just a couple options for you guys. As I was editing this video, I wanted to make sure that I included in here. All mounted up. I don't know if you could see back in there. But there she is. Same deal on both sides. Of course, you got your red on your right. You got your green on your left. Now that I got the nav lights installed, I'm going to wire them up. What I've done is I've routed my, my red and my green to the center of the boat. This is going to be the point where I'm going to leave them. So if he ever needs to get to them, he'll have access to where these are tied together. And I'm simply going to take my negative from each light and my positive from each light and go two to one on negative and two to one on positive and then route two wires to where my electronics panel will be right there. To do that, I need a few tools, a wire strippers, a crimper. Now this crimper is specifically for heat shrink crimps. And that's what I've got right here, heat shrink crimps. These are the red ones as you see, 22 to 18 gauge. Wagner heat gun to get it done. All right, all wired up, added some zip ties, just kind of clean it up a little bit. You can see how these heat shrink connectors work really well. Kind of some glue squirts out the end, seals everything up nicely. I'm just using some marine gray wire, guys. I've got a lot of different colors and scraps. This is yellow, we're running for the negative, blue for the uh, positive. At this point, run these through and then snake my wire back to the back of the boat to that panel where my electronics are. So wiring connects there, routes around, Pops out here, feeds along there, goes through there, goes in here to this tube, and then pops out here to what will eventually be the electronics panel inside of a hatch for this entire boat. Everything in here is labeled. As you can see, here's the nav lights. Now, I'm not to the point of doing the final wiring and connecting all these to the fuse box and switches. Not just yet. This boat's got to go to paint. I've got to deck it. And then when it comes back from paint, it needs hydro turf. And once the lids are in and everything is turf, the very last thing I'll do is uh, hardwire everything in. So we're just gonna fast forward to that point. And here we are guys, the boat is all done. Came out beautiful, full build video on this boat. So if you wanna know all the ins and outs and you hadn't seen the build video, check that out. But here's how the switch panel turned out. 
And I'm gonna get inside the boat, show it to you from the other side and show you how everything's fused. And there she is guys from inside the cockpit, switch panel location. There is the nav light. When you turn it on, it lights up, lets you know the accessory is on, turn it off, light goes dark. These are five pin switches. I only use three of the pins. I'm not gonna go super in depth with wiring because I have wiring videos and there's a lot of wiring videos out there on YouTube. So you can look that up, but I will kind of tell you what I did with the leads coming from the nav lights. Let me show you where the fuse box is and then I'll kind of quickly go over the wiring. Here is the fuse box. But essentially, if you remember up front, we had positive and negative, positive and negative, two into one, two into one. On the negative side, feeds through, and it actually goes right down here to that negative bus terminal at the bottom of that fuse box negative bus terminal combo. Now, the positive lead from the nav lights actually goes into the back of the nav light switch to one of the pins. On a second pin is a lead that jumps off of the switch and then feeds in here to the fuse box right there at the top where that five amp fuse is. And that lead there goes back to the switch. And then this is power from the battery. You've got eight gauge coming in the top and the bottom for negative and positive. Batteries are in here running three amped outdoors lithiums. And that one to the far left is the accessory battery that powers everything in this boat. Battery lead goes around, goes to the fuse box on the positive. From the fuse, uh, the lead goes and goes into the switch. And then from the switch, the positive goes back to the lights. The negative from the lights just feeds in and it goes to the negative bus terminal. And then to ground the switches, all of the switches are jumped together on the backside and then one lead feeds in to the negative on the fuse box. So again, that's the best way I could describe it, guys. Let's get this thing out here and light it up like a Christmas tree. All right, guys, got her pulled outside of the garage, got the deck lights and cockpit lights on. Give me a little bit more visibility. Gonna go ahead and apologize. A storm is coming in and it's starting to get pretty windy out here. So if you hear some wind, my bad. There is the nav lights turned on. And they are super bright. This camera is not going to do them justice. Green. And red. Again, U.S. Coast Guard approved. Two mile visibility. And they look really, really nice. And they are super sexy on the side of that boat during the daytime. Just a little tiny shark eyes. But that is about it, guys. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope there's something you can take away from it. And uh, if you're looking to install some really awesome LED nav lights, I think these little guys can uh, fit the bill for you. We'll catch you on the next one, guys. Thank mm -hmm. you.